Hello, Trouties. Welcome to today's, I have to press a button, I'm so sorry. Welcome to today's Friday Live with Sierra. Here I am in my Austin studio coming live to you as I do every Friday. Today, we are going to be talking about something that for some of you may be a little early, but for those of us in the South, it's about that time. It is transitioning from your winter wardrobe to your spring summer wardrobe. I love to talk about uh, more than just jewelry here, even though I do, I'm, well, the owner, the designer, the maker, the everythinger here at Manic Trout. So on Fridays when I go live, I talk about jewelry style, design. Sometimes I talk about the history of owning a small business and how I've grown Manic Trout for 15 years. Sometimes I talk about goals and organizing. Talk about a plethora of things here on Fridays. But like I said today, we are going to talk about transitioning from the winter clothes in your closet to the spring summer clothes. I have talked the opposite way, but this is the first time we're going to go in this direction. Now, if we're watching this in real time, if you're live or watching it today, it's Groundhog Day here in the United States. And from what I gather, it's still winter for another six weeks. But as I said when I first came in here, I'm in the South. I'm in Austin, Texas. And it's already pretty warm here. We have um, kind of a weird temperature at this time of year. It starts out like sometimes in the 30s or 40s in the morning, but by middays, like in the 70s, it's all about the layers in this part of the country right now. So for those of you that are more north, know that this is coming to you soon. And, uh, you know, it's some planning ahead that you can get going on. But I wanted to talk about that because we are about at that time. You know, I'm also, I talk a lot about how I uh, tend to buy not quantities of clothing at this age. In my 40s, I am more into the buying less items of kind of higher quality and holding on to them for a long time. So if I'm going to actually buy something, I usually put a lot of thought into it and I'll have to look around to find the thing and the color and the cut and everything that I want. So this gives you a little planning if you're a little more north. But this is not about your spring summer wardrobe. This is actually how to do the in-between. So how to work with the days like we are having here in Texas already, those really chilly mornings where you're leaving the house and it's freezing out, but by midday it's quite warm. So you want to be wearing spring clothes, but it is February <laughs> and it is still cold. So it, you know, like I said, it's a lot of layering, but you can also start to like work in, especially if you've bought some new spring pieces you can't wait to wear, you can start to work those in a little bit without looking like silly. You don't want to, you don't, you don't, you know, there are seasonal kind of clothing options for a reason. So I have some notes as I always have my trusty index cards. So we're going to talk about, first of all, we're going to talk about the five tips of how you can, and this is really just by pulling stuff out of your closet, how you can start to bring in that spring vibe into your winter wardrobe. The first is to start mixing the actual items. So I know that those of us that are in Texas, we have the cowboy boots. So it's very common to do like the cowboy boots and a flowy dress, especially at this time of year. Um, but I will say that as like the over the knee trend has been in the boots for a while, like an over the knee boot with a flowy dress. And I'm gonna say right now, when you're, this is a great time to bring up, when you are mixing your spring and summer clothes in, not all spring and summer clothes look really appropriate in February. I mean, I'm not one for like fashion rules. You really can do whatever you want, but sometimes you, you, you know, if you work in an office, you don't want to be the person that people are like, why are they wearing that? They look ridiculous. Like that's not okay. Especially if you're representing like your office and meeting with clients. So the really summery, um, like color combos are not the flowy dress that you're looking for right now. You're looking for probably ones that are like maybe a little darker, maybe, you know, that you'll wear a little later in the year. Those that you held on to through fall, those are the ones that you want to mix with the over the knee boot. Maybe like the, the shorter skirt would be great. Not the like neon pink summer spaghetti strap flowy. We're not going there yet. You kind of want to, we're in between, in between. So, you know, doing something like that or wearing dresses, like the dress that I'm wearing right now, if it were not as warm, I'd have some tights on. I want to say that I have looked into this many times and tights are basically up to like 60 degrees. So until it gets 60 degrees, wear those tights. But once it gets over 60 degrees, you're A, uncomfortable and can lead to maybe problems for women, but also I uh, start to just look a little like, why are you still wearing tights? You know, there was a picture that I saw on like a glamour of a do's and don'ts that had a woman wearing like a cute little sl short sleeve dress, flats, no tights, 
but gloves and she looked kind of crazy like you don't want to look like the kind of crazy girl in the glamour don't like that's just not our aim you're watching this because you want to like you know look a little more pulled together than that so like you want to keep those um spring and winter accessories like in tune like if you're gonna wear winter accessories like wear all winter accessories don't wear like tights and like and you know a straw hat like that looks kind of odd together it doesn't really go all right the next thing is to mix your fabrics so this is where and this comes in a lot this is like you see on like the, the the models the fashion girls they do like a big chunky sweater like a thick like like a, like a fisherman sweater or something and then they would wear like a maxi skirt that's flowy and like chiffon or something like that so you know that is a great thing of the mixing of the actual fabrics um and you know it's kind of like a play on the first one that i talked about the first one's mixing items this is still kind of it but it's more of a fabric play okay the next one is layers so i would say like a lot of you probably want to start pulling like blazers out to wear but if in the morning on the way to work it's like still kind of chilly for like the t-shirt blazer or a thin blouse blazer consider wearing like a brightly colored thin cardigan in between that blazer and that uh, shirt. Like this is the time of year where that looks great and you can have fun with that and you can really like play with the colors and the patterns and stuff like that. So enjoy the layering aspect. Scarves are fantastic at this time of year. Like this is the time of year for your scarves to shine. I actually think that might be an item, so I'm not gonna jump ahead. The next one are colors. So now is when you start to bring in more and more of the bright colors some of us, especially I know in Trouty Land, we all love our bright colors. But, um, you know, if you're wearing like the darker wintry colors, throw in something lighter with that. Sometimes it does look a little silly if you try to go like too brightly colored. But if you're somebody who wears colors, I mean, you know, it's just add a little bit more of the brightness in at this time. And then the next is to lighten the layers. So like your cardigans should get like, you know, this is where you could get your shorter like lengths, like like start to lose the big cable, heavy, thick stuff and go, uh, you know, with a trench coat instead of like your down coat. Like you're starting, like I said, the blazer comes in, and not in the tweeds, but like in like a twill, you know? So your layers are starting to be made out of lighter fabrics at this time of year. And, uh, you know, for those of us in like Texas, our winters are not very extreme, but they do get quite cold here. And our summers, as you know, are ridiculously hot. So this is like the time of year we, we can actually like wear clothes. It's kind of nice, so. <laughs> It's, it's also down here. This is like February and March are like, you know, kind of my favorite season because you can wear like all of your things and you can't wear them in the summer. So I enjoy it for that. Now, I'm going to talk about, I know you guys really like that when I did this for fall. So I'm going to talk about 10 timeless transitional pieces. So these are the pieces for the in-between and really I think they work just as well going from summer to fall either. So these are the ones that you would pull out in like the September, October, maybe early November, and then again in like the maybe February of yourself, but like the March, April things. Um, great to have these pieces on hand anyway because they mix well into both the summer and the winter, you know, in some climates especially. All right, the first is a chambray shirt. So if you are, uh, one that is uh, wearing more business, ca even more casual than business casual. Chambray, sh chambray shirt is great. They never go out of style. It's a very appealing light blue color. Tons of brands make them. You can find them all over the place. Another is a long sleeve dress. I actually looked in my closet to wear a long sleeve dress for the video today, and I don't think I have any because I used to wear them when I lived in New York, and now it's just too hot most of the time. So I'll more put on a cardigan, but have the option. It's just, it's, it's warm here. Um, but long sleeve dresses are great at this time of year, and if you have one that you love, now is the time to bring it out. You might even be able to skip the cardigan if you're wearing like a coat over it. So it is like, it's almost like having like a, a built-in permalayer, but like, the transition time is like the the awesome time for long sleeve dresses. The next are pointy toe flats or ballet flats or anything. Um, I'm a big flats fan. I enjoy them a lot, but this is a great time of year for that. You're getting out of the boots. You haven't gone into the sandals yet. So this is like wonderful for the pointy toe flat time of year. Um, a trench coat, which is basically on every list ever. Everybody should have a trench coat. I personally have two. I have your classic like cotton twill one. And then I have one that is made of like a black, like more shiny material. That almost be a dress for uh, nighttime and I wear them all the time they're so versatile great to have um, the next is you know a, a nod to the French with the long sleeve blue and white striped shirt it's on a lot of lists for like summer essentials long sleeves here don't really work in the summer but it's a great one to layer in think about that classic look with a cardigan a trench coat like that again this is like the great time of year for those long sleeve like cotton shirts it's uh, a fantastic staple for layering 
The next are the cardigans in the lighter fabrics and the brighter colors. So now we're like the, you know, one and two ply cashmere are really in at this time of year. Like this is a great time. Really, anybody that works in an office, you always have something like this around because you know that in the summers, the air conditioning makes it freezing. But, you know, it's all about the cardigan game at this time of year. And there are some great brands out there. I always have a hard time finding them. I'm very high waisted finding like the shorter ones that are not short sleeved if I want. A sleeve. I want a sleeve. I mean, it's, it's a dilemma, but you know, it, it, once you find your perfect cardigan go-to, you know that you can get them in all sorts of colors because that's the beauty of the cardigan. They come in a rainbow of colors. The next are the um, cropped trousers and they're more like the palazzo plant, or pant thing. I'm really short, so I'm not into that. And personally, a cropped trouser to me, I think should hit like ankle bone. But that is uh, like right now is like, that's like the time where those start to come in where you, you know, I think like Audrey Hepburn and anything, she always wears the little cute like cigarette pants. Like I think that's the perfect cropped trouser and it's great for this time of year because you still want pants on, but you're feeling a little springy, you know? Yeah. So the next would be something that I already brought up and that is the silk scarf situation. I of course make the necklaces with the scarves because I, I can't tie them. So, um, those of you that can wear scarves, this is your time to shine. The silk scarves especially are a lightweight addition, but they still provide warmth. They're wonderful for transitional periods. Like this is like scarf weather. This is perfect for it. I, you know, it's almost like you're putting away the gloves and the heavy scarves and you're bringing out like the more bright colored, like lighter fabric. So this is silk scarf weather for sure. Uh, next are booties, which I mean, I think most of us wear booties in the winter too. Maybe if you're in a colder climate that you don't. Um, I have been having fun in the last few years with like the booties with like the laser cutouts or like the cutout on like the side with the arches. Great, great time of year for that. Cause down here and, and boots in the summer look a little weird and down here, like about March on, I've heard them called stank boots for a reason, you know? So this is like prime booty weather where you don't need socks necessarily, but you, want to, you know, not be in your sandals quite yet. And last, of course, is jewelry, which, you know, I'm a jewelry designer, so I'm a little biased, but I find that jewelry always helps the transition because you can mix in kind of like your pieces that you feel are more summery, either because of their colors or their styles or something. I mean, you can mix those in with a wintry outfit to help make them feel a little more summery and not so like dark and heavy. So jewelry is always key to doing anything with your outfit, to you changing the feeling at all, and especially at the transitional time. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about like the differences between like winter and summer clothes and kind of what does fit in the middle of them. Um, maybe some of you do uh, those uh, closet clean out changes a couple of times a year. I think in New York, I used to do them in March here. It's about right now. Um, I don't change my closet out anymore, but I will rearrange. So like the sweaters will go in a lower thing and the bathing suits go in a higher thing. That's kind of like what I do these days. Um, I also, a great time of year too. We've talked about this. There's a closet switching video. I don't remember what number, but you can look that up in the videos. Um, you know, it's like the time to kind of like check for stains, for repairs, clean out the actual closet. It's a great time to be like, hey, I didn't wear this item at all this winter. Maybe it should go away now. Or I wore this so much that I wore it out, I need to replace it. Or I noticed that there were a lot of holes in my wardrobe. If you don't want to be, you know, you're coming out of winter, you could probably find some sales, but it's a lot of spring stuff in the stores. So if you don't want to be thinking about replacing those items, but want to kind of have them like as a uh, mental note for the next season, it's a great time to like put away the winter clothes and jot down somewhere. So when the winter clothes come into stores before you switch over closets in the next season, you can kind of do that. I know that there were a few things that I kept being like, ah, I don't have mm, this item. And it was like too late to buy it in the store when I kind of realized it. So a little planning ahead on that is sometimes nice at this time of year of the switching back over. The other thing is that the, um, oh, I totally lost my train of thought. You know, the problem with the phone is that you see things that pop up. It's completely distracting. Um, the, uh, other thing about the transitional time of year is that I also find sometimes like at the end of winter, I'll be like, oh, I forgot that dress was even over there. So sometimes like when I have put my clothes out, I'm not really in the mindset of dressing for the next season and I don't lay them out. So sometimes like when I do the closet switch and this transitional time, it's a great time to just like move clothes around. 
I do like outfit selfies in my closet mirror and it's funny because I find myself switching what clothes hang like directly behind me depending on the season so I have a different color backdrop but it also means that like every time I go into my closet I'm looking at those items right there and it makes my like eye go to them and want to wear them so sometimes at the end of the winter you'll be like well, it wasn't that I didn't wear this shirt. It's because I didn't see these eight shirts over here because they're shoved behind something else. So think about that also when you're transitioning your closet. I don't know if I brought that up in the last episode about season changes, but really like the layout of your closet can determine how your mind like can find things to go together. So we'll put that into like some thought while you're switching around. So if you're going to put some things away, here are the things that you want to put away that are winter 100% items. Anything made out of wool. That can go away very shortly. Like that should, you know, start to see if you need to be them laundered. Do not put like uh, natural fibers, like wool, um, cashmere, things like that. Don't put those away dirty because moths are attracted to dirt and they will eat the holes where the dirt were. So make sure that all of those are going away very clean. You can put some like lavender sachets or cedar in there when you store them. But now is the time to start being like, oh, did I wear this sweater? I should wash this sweater. Um, I'm a big fan of the hand washing. I actually don't always like how the dry cleaner makes my sweater feel, but if you're going to start hand washing, sometimes it takes a while to do them all and lay them out and all that. So that might be time to do your wool and your heavier like cashmere, things like that. So any thick sweaters, those go away. You can transition them a little bit this month, but we're already too hot where if I were wearing like a thick sweater during the day, I'd be like sweating to death. So I wouldn't do that. Um, heavy coats, same thing. Those heavy coats, like keep an eye on them, launder them before you store them away, but it's time to kind of transition out of the heavy coats. Uh, you guys in the North, mind you, this is a little bit ahead of time for you. So I'm talking about transition period, not today, which is in February. So uh, the transition period is like no more heavy coats, no more heavy sweaters, no more wool, no more turtlenecks. People still wear turtlenecks? I have a few turtleneck sweaters that I love. Um, you also probably are phasing out your hats and your gloves at this time and um, those heavy boots and like materials that start to go away besides the wools are like tweeds, the really dark twills, things like that. Um, a lot of like the, like your New Year's Eve clothes can go away, like those like really sparkly cocktail dresses for like Christmas and New Year's Eve are usually too heavy for summer. So that stuff can all start to be looked at. You know, if you don't wear it, get rid of it. If you, uh, you know, need to launder it, do that. If it needs to be repaired, put that aside. So now is the transition is like the time to start thinking about that, but you're still wearing some of them. So you don't need to like do the like full closet overhaul. So the in-between things that you're going to want to keep around for a while, at least a couple of months of this like transition period are the, the light and bright cardigans are the cutout booties. The mules with thicker heels can become like kind of at the later part of the transition. They're like a great, you know, when it's like a lot of leather on your foot and then like a thicker heel. I was like a 90s college kid. So um, I was in high school and college in the 90s and these were like all about that, like the Steve Madden era, you know? Uh, but that kind of like vibe that's come back um, a lot right now, those all can start to, uh, transition you through because like your toes will be showing but it's like still a really heavy clunky heel so it's not summery it's like meant for this in between time um the floral tops can come out like start wearing those floral tops i don't know if i'd go with the see-through ones yet and if you are going to put like a substantial something underneath it you're not it's like not see-through floral top time um but the like darker colored florals for sure can come in right now but don't wear them with like white jeans right now like that's not that's summer so think about like you have like one foot in summer, one foot in winter. Um, you also want to make sure that you have all of your colorful accessories, like your colorful scarves, your colorful jewelry, all fun stuff like that should be accessible now if you put things away because you're going to start to mix those in a little bit. And now let's talk about the few things that you need to save for summer. All right. So these are things that like might not be quite what you want to be wearing yet. These are the spaghetti strap dresses, unless you put like something substantial over them. That's like a little too summery. And as I talked about earlier, those like light and bright, that we're not there yet. Nothing like see-through yet. Um, also, I, I think that I still feel like if you were wearing like, you know, like the, the kind of like preppy sandals with like the starfish on them, 
I think any sea things on your feet are not quite there yet. Thong sandals, like that's all too early for me. I, like when people in Texas, people do wear flip flops year round, but they're not wearing them right now. Like it's like a little, like if they are, they're more like the utility sandal. They're not like the delicate, like embellished sam sandal. Those I hold out a little bit longer on until summer. I also think that the white jeans, though yes, there's winter white, but like white jeans scream midsummer. So if you're going like to Florida, you could wear them right now. But otherwise, like I'd hold off on that for a while. Um, also, shorts are not really, do, do women our age wear shorts? I don't know. <laughs> That's not really a, uh, I think, a thing that you wear until summer yet either. Um, you know, I kept seeing pictures of the cutoff shorts. Those days are long behind me. But for, you know, the, the, those of you that do wear them, hold off on those for a while. And, and anything made out of straw. So, like, I'm a real fan of, like, raffia handbags and things like that. I love, like, the 60s, like, resort vibe that they give and stuff. That is very summery. So, like, straw hats, things like that. If you're on vacation, anything goes with that. That's, like, resort wear. And resort wear for everyday life... This is prime resort wear on vacation time of year, but like you pack that to go to the beach. You don't pack that to be out in the everyday quite yet. So you're not gonna mix those in. That's like a very summery vibe. Um, and you know, I feel like it's, uh, I saw something that like the lighter denim kind of comes out. You can bring like that out, but like, you know, don't get really light and thin. That's basically how you wanna kind of play it at the transition time of year. So Trouties, that was kind of a fun way for me to take you through the next few months of transitioning your closet and what you're wearing from winter to spring. Like I said, here in Texas, we're kind of there. It's a weird time of year. It's like, do you bring the plants out? Do you wear short sleeves? Like it's, who knows what it's going to end up halfway through the day. It's that weird time of year. So that's why you don't want to be, you know, completely unprepared. You want layers, take some layers with you. I um, also wanted to make a note at the end of today's video in case it wasn't clear last week that uh, last year I was doing like uh, menagerie collections in between all of the other collections and as I said last week the February one is not happening and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to go back to four collections a year because it's just too much. There's so much behind the scenes that goes into a collection and line sheets and sending things out. It's just too much to do in a four week period. So. Definitely not February. I, I'm not scheduled to do another mini collection until May. So we'll see how that goes. But don't forget, in March, the Spring Summer 18 collection will come out, which is very exciting. Um, I think that was all of the news that I had today. Not much news-wise going on. I, um, of course, leave these videos up. And I do them every Friday at 1 p.m. But if you are catching the tail end of this, know that you can go back into the videos and watch it all the way through on the Facebook page. Also, I have them on YouTube and on manicdrive.com. They are all over the place. I will be back here next Friday at 1 p.m. Central. Who knows what we're going to talk about. And until then, I'm always on the Facebook page and on Instagram, both Manic Trout. I love to talk to you Trouties. Please leave comments, send me messages, Sierra at ManicTrout.com. I can't wait to hear from you if I've never heard from you before. And if we've already been in conversation, I love to know what's going on with you. So thank you Trouties. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for being Trouties. I'm Sierra Bailey, the designer, maker, owner, and everything here at Manic Trout. And I will see you here next Friday at 1 p.m. Central.